We are a circus of big family tradition. And with the way we present our show is the same way that my family presented the show over 175 years ago. There's nothing fancy about what we do here. It's magic, real magic. When you grow up in a circus as a child, you just step into being a clown. Benvenuti, benvenuti tutti. Welcome to the Zoppe Circus. Thank you for coming. We're a classic family circus, which means our families here working together, performing together. Would you like to meet some of our family? First of all, there's my mother, the matriarch of our family. Then I have my sister, Carla, who, with her husband, Rudy, they perform with their dog act. And then we have my sister, Tosca. She has the horses on the show, but she also directs the show. Her husband, Jay, is an amazing white clown. The white clown is the straight clown. He's the best white clown that I've ever seen. The act that my son and I do right now in a show is actually a balloon routine. It's nothing new. I mean, it's thousands of years old. Clowns have been doing it forever. It happens to be really cute when he does it because he's adorable. It's an, it's an unexplainable thing to see my child do what he loves to do. I mean, this, I get this seven-year-old beautiful little boy, and his heart opens up and he gives it to everybody. It's different here, I think, than most places. When we come into this ring, we become family. I believe circus and family are basically the same word. The first ride is the straight wall ride. The second act is our go-kart, so it's four wheels this time. Third act, so it's riding one of these lovely ladies. And we do hands off, standing up hands off, sitting on the side, standing on the side, a whole array of acts. It's an experience you can't compare anything in the world to. I'm Kerry Cameron and I'm a Wall of Death rider and I ride for Luke Fox's original Wall of Death. See the Hell Riders race this afternoon. We'll take you way back in time, back to the late 1920s. I started riding the Wall of Death by pure accident. I used to work with horses and unfortunately where I was working the place shut down so naturally we went to the job centre and I just typed in horse rider into the search engine and Wall of Death rider came up. And uh, I went down to the yard and they had the wall built up. I knew there and then that was it. <laughs> you do get very dizzy when you first learn to ride because you've got building your stamina up to the dizziness. You have to be going at least 30 mile an hour to stay on, otherwise gravity will just whip you straight off. It's a mixture of three things, so balance, speed, and obviously a bit of stamina. Just lifting your arm up to wave goodbye to the audience is quite a feat. It is a good feeling being a female rider in this masculine environment. It gives me a great buzz, because a lot of people, when they see you walk into the wall, they just think you're a bit of flash, you know. But as soon as they see you get on the bike, you can hear like murmurs saying, oh, there's a girl on a motorbike. See all their faces light up. And then after the show, all the girls, they were like, wow, you've got bigger balls than most of the men. But, <laughs> but it's, it's great to know that they're looking at you thinking, well, if you can do it, then so can I. There's a certain feeling of adrenaline once you get up there in the air. It's a feeling unlike any other. You feel power. You feel like you're in control. You feel special. 
That's what makes trapeze beautiful. That's what makes the circus beautiful. My name is Kristen Finley and I'm a trapeze artist. 15 years ago I was working for a brewery in Los Angeles. I had a great life, making great money. I had, you know, my Lexus and I had a house. I was only, you know, 24 years old. A friend of mine told me that she was flying trapeze and I said, what are you doing? I want to come watch. I ended up taking a class and I was hooked. It was addictive right away and I quit my life in LA and I joined the circus. I went from good pay to zero pay. Just had to give everything up pretty much overnight. And here we are 15 years later. I never looked back and I've been on the road ever since. To run away and join the circus, it takes commitment. You have to be ready for anything. You have to kind of live on your toes because you never know what's gonna happen your own personal space, your RV or whatever, that's your home. And that's what has to be stable inside. Whenever you're flying trapeze, you have to focus on what you're doing. And the moment you doubt yourself in the middle of a trick, most likely you're gonna mess up, you're not gonna make it. The fact that I was able to do it made it more appealing to me. I'm doing these tricks and they're harder and they're harder and this is awesome. Whatever you want to do in your wildest dreams, do it. Anything is possible. There's not too many African-American female circus performers, but I was still able to do it. Your life is what you make of it, and I wouldn't change my life for the world. I really wouldn't. You get skinny and then you want to cover it up. I just wore clothing, baggy clothes, things that hid my body. I would have little games in my head that I would play, like, let's see how long I can go without eating. I would definitely still be starving myself if I had not found circus arts. I'm Kayla Dykes, and I'm a professional aerialist and a survivor of anorexia. I did gymnastics and developed anorexia in my teens into my 20s. At my lowest point, I was 90 pounds, and that's when I discovered circus arts. It changed my life because I knew that if I wanted to do it, I needed to grow stronger and grow from it. It took me eight years to get from there to here. Anorexia never really goes away. You just learn how to shut it out. When I look in the mirror now, I don't see the muscle mass. I feel small. Almost immediately, I'm thinking, you know that's not true. You can climb 200 feet straight up. <laughs> I had no idea from my first day that this would end up being my profession. Back then, you know, I would cook a pot of noodles and I would have to get my then husband to strain the noodles for me because I didn't have the strength to lift the pot of water and noodles and pour it out. And I remember asking, like, what is wrong with me? and one of my trainers looked at me and she said, you need to eat. I had fallen in love with Ariel so much so that I was willing to put food in my mouth and grow some muscle so I can get up in the air and keep up with all my classmates. If I could say anything to my anorexic self, it would be that you could be so much nicer to your body. At the time, I thought I was taking care of it. I wasn't, and I didn't know any better. I'm capable of so much more.
When I'm juggling, I feel like I have a superpower. To me, it's just an amazing feeling to keep lots of things in the air and to keep these big patterns going. Sam Malcolm is a combat juggler. The object of the sport is to keep all three pins in the air while preventing your opponent from doing likewise. Light bumping and arm-to-arm -arm altercations are permitted. The last juggler standing wins. I got into combat juggling at about 3 a.m. at a juggling convention flying around with some friends, uh, just trying to see who could be the last one standing. We've all been to circuses, we've all seen variety acts, but this is something that makes it more of a sport. If you're playing football, you have to put in the work to get good at football. Juggling is no different, you have to put in hours and hours and hours of practice. You're not only accounting for the three objects that you're juggling, you have to anticipate that there could be something flying at your head, from 50 feet in the air, because it's so wild and crazy, there's so many other people playing. I warm up for combat juggling. I jump rope for about 10 minutes. I work on balancing things on my head and on my face. There's a lot of wild throws, there's a lot of wild saves, there's a lot of jumping around and falling and running on the ground, and I try to go through all of those things to get ready. You see incredible plays by people like Steph Curry or LeBron James. I can look at those people and tell you like they'd be great jugglers because they have that awareness over their body. It's something new and exciting and fresh. It's something fun. It's something different. So I'm optimistic that it'll grow and become something really great.